Hey Growl fans, it's me Victor Salinas uh, coming to you with another tutorial video. And I've been getting a lot of emails from uh, you guys, my uh, subscribers on YouTube and also on the growwell.com website asking me for more specific examples about how to actually get started in writing a manuscript. And so I thought I'd make another video. I know I did one previously. A lot of you uh, first found me through the video about how to write a fantasy novel. So in this video I'll be talking about how specifically to write a novel manuscript. There are a lot of videos out there that say that you can do it in 30 days a week. I even saw one that said you can write a manuscript in 24 hours. Now while I think that might be possible, you might be able to get as many words down in that time. Uh, they're probably not going to cohere as a novel, and I'm going to tell you exactly why in this video, why 90 days is actually a very good time target. But before we get started, I'd like to invite everyone listening to head over to the Growwell website at growwell.com slash subscribe. Every week you'll get writing tips, uh, posts on some fandoms, fantasy and sci-fi topics, and also I put a lot of my personal posts on there about uh, finding inspiration, motivation, and overcoming the challenges of being a writer and an artist. So I'll put that URL in the video and also the video description. I invite everyone to check that out. So through this video, I'm going to describe the many steps that it will take to finish your novel manuscript, and that's going to be put out over 90 days or 12 weeks. Now this video is going to assume that you already have a basic idea of what your novel is going to be about. Uh, you already have kind of uh, an idea for the plot, who the characters are, etc. Now the single biggest thing that you need to keep in mind is conflict. Now I made a video about creating conflict for your story and I'll link to that in the description and also the video itself so I won't use up too much of our time here for this video on describing exactly why you need to have conflict but suffice it to say that if there's not a major point of conflict between your antagonists and protagonists your story is not going to get anywhere. You're not going to be telling anything interesting that anyone is really going to want to read about. So that's absolutely essential to make sure that your novel has at least one major point of conflict. Having several different kinds of conflicts going on simultaneously is a very good thing to have, but at the its most basic level you need to have at least one major conflict going on between your chief protagonist and your chief antagonist. So that's something you want to keep in mind as you're moving through all these steps. So starting with the first phase of this 12-week uh, novel manuscript writing process, you're going to want to work on your outline. Both of these first weeks are going to be spent entirely working on your outline. You're not going to do anything else. You're not actually going to write any of the chapters. It's very important that you spend dedicated time planning exactly what you're going to do. Now there are a couple of different ways to do an outline. I know a lot of people that write will do a very, very detailed outline. They'll actually write out entire scenes and describe exactly what's going to happen. I don't really do that. I kind of take a more fluid approach because you will find that as you work, a lot of things are going to change. Uh, it doesn't matter how well thought out you think your story is now. As you're writing, you'll find opportunities for improvement, and especially as you get into the later stages of revising your own work, you're going to see a lot of holes in your thinking and a lot of uh, opportunities for improvement. So in that kind of fluid spirit, knowing that a lot of things are going to change, what I advocate doing is writing your outline on index cards. So if your novel is going to say be 40, 50 chapters, you're going to have 40 or 50 index cards. And on each one of these index cards, you're just going to write the name of the chapter. Uh, I don't usually give my chapters names, I just call them chapter 1, chapter 2, etc. And underneath that heading, you're just going to write the major points that need to be covered in that chapter. So for example, in some of mine, I just again write the title of the chapter at the top, and then I'll say, protagonist needs to find friend, protagonist has deep conversation with friend, protagonist finds out that his or her life is in danger, protagonist and friend escape together. Usually just two to ten sentences, depending on how complex the chapter is going to be. I don't like to straightjacket myself and get so detailed in the outline that while I'm writing I can't feel my way through exactly how the characters are going to react. And some writers don't like to use outlines at all, which is fine. Uh, sometimes I don't either. Again, it depends exactly what I'm writing and how exactly it's evolving. A lot of times as I write when I first start off I have a very very solid idea of exactly what's going to happen and the closer I get towards the end the less I rely on my outline because the ideas are starting to take shape in and of themselves and they kind of 
the characters get a life of their own, which is really good. You're kind of getting in the zone at that point. But for anyone who's never done this before or has very limited experience, I would highly suggest using an outline of some kind. Now I did an entire video on how to make an outline and how to use an outline, which I'll link to in the video description and also the video itself. So if you'd like to know more about how to do an outline exactly, or more specifically how I do an outline and how you can follow that same example, uh, just link to that video there and check that out. And that will give you kind of a more complete rundown of how that works. An outline is going to serve you really well uh, as you move on to the next steps. A lot of times you may feel overwhelmed or lost. Uh, that's something that we all feel, even experienced writers. And an outline, even though you know going into it you know it's going to change down the line, it gives you reassurance. It's something to lean on. A writing can be a very chaotic activity, like all art is. I mean, you have to kind of discover yourself your pushing yourself into new territory that, you know, your story is unique. No one else, including you, have ever been there before. So it can be scary. It can feel like a storm is building up around you. And your outline is going to be your lamp. It's going to guide you through that storm. Now, after you finish your outline, the bulk of this entire process is actually going to be spent in writing the chapters. And that's going to happen from about weeks three to eight. So you're going to spend about six weeks doing this. And that's half the time that it should take to do this entire process. Now, for me personally, when I'm doing one of my novels, uh, the novels themselves have between 35 and 50 chapters each. So I set a goal for myself most days to write at least one chapter a day. Sometimes I'll do two or three, depending on uh, how much time I have outside of other activities that I have to do, and also how well the story is starting to flow. At the beginning, it's typically slower. I might just do one chapter, sometimes not even complete a chapter in the first few days. But as the weeks roll on, I'll find sometimes I can do four or five. And that's, you know, 40 or 50 pages a lot of times in a day. So when I'm sitting down to write one of the chapters, I just look at my note cards. I study exactly, you know, this is going to be chapter 10, say, that I'm going to do today. I read everything on it. I take a few minutes, a lot of times half an hour, and just think about it and visualize those scenes in my head. And then I just sit down and start writing it from beginning to end. Now something you have to keep in mind while writing is your readers are not going to be as smart as you. They're not as well versed in your universe. They don't know what the characters look like. They don't know what the characters are doing. They don't know what the characters are thinking. So that's your job as the writer to make that come to life. And the way that I look at it is it's very much like describing a movie to someone. You have to give them all the critical details so that the vision that you have in your head when you're sitting there and reading your note cards and you see and hear and smell and can touch all of these sensations that are going on in your story, you have to transmit that information from your mind, your imagination, into your reader's mind and imagination. Now that's a very difficult thing to do and a very difficult thing to describe. And that's something that a lot of my videos here on YouTube and articles on the website revolve around, that kind of process of actually sitting down to write. And it's the subject of many future videos that I'll do in smaller parts. But that's the critical thing that you have to keep in mind, is that your reader does not know anywhere near as much as you do about your setting. Your job as the writer is to transmit that information from your head into your reader's head. So do your best while you're working on your chapters to portray that information as accurately as possible and also as succinctly as possible. Now at this stage, it's okay that you kind of run on or you feel like your story is not getting anywhere. It's not as good as you want it to be. Remember that this is just your first draft. So there's plenty, plenty, plenty of opportunities ahead to fix it. It's more important at this stage between weeks three and eight that you actually sit your ass in the chair and just get to typing. Get each chapter done just as you have them out in your note cards and don't worry too much about it being perfect or good enough. Because I'll tell you from experience that there are a lot of times where I don't want to write but I have to do it. I sit down, uh, I've built a discipline to do it. That's something that will come to you with time. You'll get that discipline as well. You just sit down and you write, you let the words come out. It doesn't matter whether you like them or not. And sometimes, you know, the words they just feel really crappy, your story feels really crappy, and other times they're really great and you're kind of in a zone and the words just come out really easily. And what you'll find is that once you're done, a reader won't be able to tell the difference between those two kinds of writing. 
because your crappier writing will get improved with revisions and edits, and your really, really great writing will actually have to be toned down because a lot of times it's very pretentious, it's very intricate, and it's very difficult. So that will get toned down, your crappier writing will get toned up, and they'll kind of converge on a level standard. Reading back over my own work and my own novels, uh, a lot of times I couldn't tell you whether that was a good day or a bad day through all the revisions and edits that ended up happening. They just kind of converge on each other. The days that I didn't really feel like sitting down and writing and I thought that my work was crap, and then the days that I thought it was really great but it ended up being really pretentious and stuffy, you know, they, you just kind of blend those together until you find a perfect medium, a kind of Goldilocks zone of not pretentious and not shitty. So during this time, depending on how long your novel is going to be, I'd say you're going to write anywhere from 60 to 120,000 words or so. Uh, my novels tend to be around 100,000 words once they're finished, but I probably only write 70 to 80,000 words during the six weeks that I give myself to actually write the chapters themselves. Now that's just a personal habit of mine. Uh, the length comes through revisions. I find a lot of times I can go in and add a lot more description, a lot more world building that comes later. A lot of other writers I know, they tend to write too much. Uh, they'll write a manuscript that's 200,000 words and then the editors tell them they have to cut it down and it ends up being 120,000 and then they might use some of that extra material for another book. So it just depends, you know, some people struggle to get up to their goal. Uh, some people overshoot it and then have to cut it down. But I'd say for most beginners, you want to probably stick to a lower goal. So say 80, 90,000 is definitely attainable. So just to illustrate looking at this timetable here, if you had a novel that was 90,000 words, that's about 1,500 per day or three to four hours every single day to do that. And that's, that's pretty good, even if you have a full-time or part-time job, uh, like I did when I was writing the first Growlout novel, you definitely have the time to do that every day. So you can see, if you bump it up to 120,000 words, it starts to get a little hectic. Uh, you have to do 2,000 words a day, which may be difficult, depending if you have a lot of obligations on the side, and you have to spend between four and six hours a day. Now, that's definitely doable if you're really committed, but if you're just starting out, uh, it might be a little overwhelming. And if you're really shooting high for maybe 150,000 words, you see that you have to do about 2,500 words a day and spend between five and eight hours. Now, if you're a professional novelist, you know, a, a Brandon Sanderson, a Stephen King, uh, those sorts of guys, they have that much time because that's what they do every day, all day. So their novels can be longer if they want them to be because they have the time to do it. So if you're just starting out, shoot towards the lower end of the spectrum. Aim for 90,000 is a really good number, I would say, to accomplish in 90 days. The most important thing to keep in mind is just sit down, work on it every day. I did another video talking about the Beach Hawk Principle, which is uh, butt in chair, hands on keyboard. I'll link to that in the video description and also the video itself. And that's a little piece of motivation that all of us can use, a kind of swift kick in the ass and a reminder to just sit down and work. If you're going to be a writer, you have to write. There are a lot of people who talk about wanting to write and, and they don't do it. Uh, what really separates a writer from a non-writer is someone who actually sits down and gets something done, even if it's just a little bit every single day. Now, the last stages of this 90-day plan are the parts that most writers hate the most, and it's probably the least fun for me as well. Even though I do enjoy editing, uh, it's probably the least fun because it's very, very tedious. Now, between weeks 9 and 12, you're going to be reading through what you wrote in the last six weeks over and over and over again. Now, the first thing I do after I complete the manuscript, after I get my first draft done, I set it aside for at least a day, if not two days, and don't look at it and don't think about it because you will be very, very, very tired. Just the thought of writing or reading another one of your words will probably make you sick. So after that day or two of rest, I go back and I just read through it one time. I print it out on my printer, use a three-hole punch, put it inside of a binder. I make sure that the margins are really wide. Usually when I print something out that I've written, a novel that I've written, I make the margins really, really wide, about two and a half inches top, bottom, and on both sides so that I have a lot of space to mark it up. Then I take a highlighter and a red pen and I go through it, read through it line by line and mark it up. Anytime I see punctuation error, a grammatical error, maybe an inconsistency or I have a new idea, 
to change something, I write that down in the margins and mark it up with my pen and highlighter. Then after I do that, I go back inside of the Word file and I make all of those corrections. I go page by page, paragraph by paragraph, and every little mark or note that I made, I actually put that in the digital file itself. Then I print it out again. Then I read through it again and check for one thing at a time. So the second thing I usually look for is the dialogue. I read through, I don't pay attention to the plot itself. I just look at the dialogue, everything in quotation marks and describing how the characters speak and how they move. I just look at that and correct that. Go back in my digital file, make all those corrections. Then I print it out again. I read back through it a third time, looking at all the action scenes and at the pacing. I look for opportunities to shorten it up. I'm a really big fan of making things very simple, very straightforward. Describe only as you need to. So on the third read through, I'm looking for things like how fast is the story moving? Could this pace be picked up a little bit? Does this need to be slowed down? I specifically look at things like action sequences, which are really, really sensitive to pacing. If they're too short, uh, you don't get the choreography well. If they're too long, then they drag on and they kind of lose their excitement. So I look for things like pacing during the third read-through. I mark up all my notes, revise the digital file, then I print it out again. I read through it a fourth time, this time looking for things like consistency, especially as they regard to world building. Uh, I look for, has there been a time where I contradict myself in different parts of the manuscript? Uh, I can recall a lot of times where I have characters say that such and such a lord lives in, in this land, and then I say he actually lives in another land in a different part. You're going to look for things like that, little inconsistencies, and also opportunities to world build, drop little hints about how you build up your world. I did a number of videos on world building. I'll link to those in the video description and also the video itself. And during this uh, fourth read through here, you're just looking for those kinds of consistencies to make sure that your world is going to be credible because whether you realize it or not, if you have a lot of contradictions or really any contradictions in the world itself, your readers are going to be able to see through that and they're not going to buy the setting. They're going to get taken out of it because they're going to think this isn't really well thought out. This isn't a real place that I can see myself in. I'm not going to give this much of my time. That's something that you, especially if you're doing sci-fi and fantasy, that's something you have to be very, very, very careful about. So after I'm done with those notes, I go back in my digital file, make any changes that I need to, type up any extra material, and then I print it out again, go through a fifth read through. And this is very similar to the last one. You're looking for things like plot holes. You're looking for errors in logic. There have been a couple of times that I can remember where, you know, a chapter will end describing a particular character, like running away or moving to a different location. And the next time we see that character in another chapter, they're not even in the same place. They're not even doing the same thing. So a lot of times when you're working through something, you won't even notice that you make plot hole errors like that or inconsistencies. So you want to fix those in this read through. And again, you'll go back in your digital file and make all those changes. Then I print it out a sixth time and sometimes a seventh. And then I'll just read through the entire thing, not necessarily looking for anything in particular, but just reading it through as a whole and making notes. So at a very minimum during these weeks, 9 through 12, you're going to be reading through your manuscript six times, if not more. Most of the times you're checking for individual things, inconsistencies, spelling, punctuation, that sort of thing. And the other times you'll just be giving it a general read through, trying to put yourself in your reader's position, pretend that you don't know anything about the story, try to read it with fresh eyes. And it, it is very exhausting, but this is absolutely necessary to prepare yourself for the later stages. Now during these weeks, you'll also be doing a lot of writing. Uh, at this pace, you're going to be reading through your manuscript every three or four days or so and taking notes. And on the days that you're not reading, or some of the days that you are reading, you're also going to be writing a lot. So you might be writing a thousand or two thousand words a day during this time. Because you'll find that a lot of scenes need to be rewritten. You'll need to add extra material. Some things will need to be deleted entirely. So you're going to be doing a lot of shifting around. And that's also going to involve a lot of writing. Anytime you know, you're editing something, you think, you know, you're just reading through and marking things up with a highlighter or a pen. But remember, when you're marking things up, that means that more writing has to be done. New writing and editing go hand in hand. You're going to be doing a lot of that. So after you've given those read-throughs and done your corrections, you're going to be done with the process. 12 weeks will have passed or 90 days, and you'll have the first draft of your manuscript, which is definitely something that you should celebrate if you finally make it to that stage go out for a nice dinner on the town, hang out with your friends, throw a party. That's that's a really great accomplishment. It's not easy. Most people that 
even start out to try to do that fail. So after this, there are a number of things that you'll have to do, which we'll cover in future videos, things like finding beta readers to give you feedback, using that feedback to make new drafts, and then kicking off the many editorial revisions and rounds of editing that you'll have to do after that. Now I'd like to say that these 90 days is not a trivial thing. It's not a just a number that I made up. It's something that a lot of professional writers do use as a sort of pace setter for how long it should take them to write a manuscript. A lot of writers, uh, especially if they're writing a series, release one book a year. So if you can write your first draft of your manuscript in 90 days, you'll have plenty of time to get through the multiple rounds of editing and proofing required, and also give the printers and publishers time to get all of the technical aspects, you know, like coming up with the dies for actually printing the book, and also designing the cover and, and those sorts of considerations. So 90 days, you know, three months, 12 weeks, that's a very, very key number. That's a very key target to keep in mind, and I think it's a really good one. It's not too long or too short, because if it were longer than that, especially if you're just starting out, you can get discouraged the longer the project drags on the more you can become overwhelmed with the scope of it, and you might give up somewhere along the line. And if it's shorter than that, like, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are a lot of other videos and articles I've seen out there that tell you you can get a manuscript done in just one month or one week, and I, and I saw a video that said in 24 hours, and that's just way too short. There is no way you could get a novel that's going to be complete and, and, and whole in any sense that you that you could do in one day. It's just, I, I can't imagine that that would work out in any way whatsoever. A lot of people will tell you, they'll give you these sort of solutions that sound really easy, but writing is hard work. Writing is work. So I would say not to listen to those that tell you, if you follow me, it's going to be easy. I'm going to tell you up front that it's very difficult. Very few people who start off down this road actually ever get anywhere or get to the point where they have something that's tangible, a tangible manuscript that they can use. So I'll be the first to tell you, and, and I hope I'm not breaking any bubbles out there, that it's a very, very difficult thing to do. But if you're watching this video and you're enthused to do it, and you give yourself the time and you stick with it and you build the discipline, I know for sure that you can get it done. So I'd like to close this video by asking everyone to tell me if you have a manuscript in the works, if you have an idea that you want to work on or you are in the middle of working on, I would definitely love to hear more about it. You can let me know in the comments below, or you can email me directly at victor.salinas at growwell.com. I'm always very excited to hear everyone's ideas, and I think that's really how we writers get to learn anything is, is not just through our own exploration, but kind of comparing and contrasting ideas with each other. I would also like to remind everyone once again to head over to the Growelt website at growelt.com slash subscribe. You can get more articles and videos. And we also do a lot of posts about fandom and fantasy and sci-fi. I also put a lot of personal stories out there about writing and being an artist and the struggles that come with it. And if you sign up there with your email address, you will also get emailed a free ebook preview of the first book of the Growelt series, The Sword and Its Servant. And I use these exact same techniques to write that book and also the forthcoming installments of the Growlout series that we talked about in this video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Don't forget to share and rate this video if you liked it, and subscribe to the Growlout channel. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.